New Year. Greetings to BHM family and everybody who's watching online. Uh, it's a joy and a privilege, privilege once again to be in the house of God as a family of God, as a corporate family, yeah. even though there are distance. But we are one as a family in the spirit of the Most High God. And we're here to worship the King of Kings, the great I Am. And we are worshiping Him in spirit and truth. And just let's get up to our feet wherever you are. Get excited because we are here to worship our Lord, our Savior, our Master, our Redeemer, Jesus. And let's do it with a cheerful heart. I know there are pressures around you. I know there are challenges around you. I know a lot of you are going through. But in the midst of it, we have a hope. We have a way out. God's word is a lamp unto our feet and that will take us to victory. And uh, over to Pastor Sylvia even as she opens in scripture uh, reading and she uh, prays for this morning. Let's believe the Lord to touch us, to minister to us, speak to us, encourage us this morning. Come on. Hello church, we have entered the 12th month of this yes. year 2020. Can you believe it? Yes. We are in the last month. God has been faithful. God has been good. And we are here and we can only sing of the mercies and the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. How great is our God. Great is his faithfulness. Amen. His mercies have been it's new so. every morning in Thank our lives. I don't think anybody will have any room for any complaints because mm. God has been good to us. Thank you, Lord. And this morning, even as we are on the first Sunday of the month of December, you know, December started and we all started feeling joyous. You know, I'm looking forward to see those decorations and, you know, yeah. to celebrate this season. So let's fill our hearts with joy, you know, of what the Lord has done in our life. And yeah. to encourage you, I want to read from those Psalm. Yeah, for those who are feeling low, I want to encourage you and I want to read from Psalm 20. It says, in times of trouble, may the Lord answer your cry. May the name of the Lord of Jacob keep you safe from all harm. May he send you help from his sanctuary and strengthen you from Jerusalem. May he remember all your gifts and look favorably on your burnt offerings. May he grant your heart's desire and make all your plans to succeed. May we shout for joy when we hear of your victory and raise a victor of victory banner in the name of our God. May the Lord answer all your prayers. Now I know that the Lord rescues his anointed king. He will answer him from his holy heaven and rescue him by his great power. Some nations boast of their chariots and horses, but we boast in the name of the Lord our God. Those nations will fall down and collapse, but we will rise up and stand firm. Give victory to our King, O Lord. Answer our cry for help. Amen. 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 Come, amen. let's pray together, church. Shakala. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, Lord. Thank you that you are a prayer answering God. Lord, with whom nothing is impossible, Lord. And in this time, even as we come and worship you, Lord, we want to lift our hearts before you, Lord. And we want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy that has followed us all all the days of our life Lord forgive us for the times we may have grumbled murmured Lord but this morning Lord we just want to sing your praises Lord we want to worship you Abba Father we want to enter your holy of holies Lord and lift your name on high because you are great you do miracles so great and there is no one else like you Jesus no one else like you oh God we Alleluia, worship you. Alleluia. Lord, even as we come and declare Alleluia. your praises, we pray, Lord, Alleluia. take away every distraction, Lord, yes, Lord, that together we would stand yes, in our own house, homes or wherever we are, Lord, and <clears throat> worship you with reverence yes, and awe in our hearts, oh Alleluia. God. We yes, thank you. We give you glory. In yes, Jesus' Jesus. wonderful name we pray. Amen. 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 Over to the worship team and come on, church, get excited. Amen. This is a season to celebrate and let's celebrate Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, good morning church, I hope you guys are doing well. Um, we have gathered today to worship the name of the Lord and um, we'd like for you to see you guys to like stand up and praise and sing praise and worship songs with us and um, please like and subscribe and share the link to your friends and family so that they can also be touched. And
Church, uh, I sense in my spirit, even as uh, during the week, the Lord continues to minister, speak. And I sense very strongly this is what the Lord is trying to tell all of us to do is to be ready to move into a new season. He's promising us to reach for new things. Uh, I don't know how many of you have that Christian calendar at home that we have. It says time to reach out for the new. Okay, church, it's time for us to believe for new things. It's time for us to believe to reach to new levels in a walk on a daily living uh, in this journey of life. And God is saying this to many of us. Some of you are uh, are already feeling uh, uh, like a monotony. Some of you are feeling stagnated. Uh, some of us are also feeling uh, how long? Because even for us uh, as a uh, or the online church, it's not that, but that's the best alternative in this current situation. So, but let me tell you, the Lord was just uh, ministering over my heart that we are on the brink of opening up into a something like a new season where we are going to see new things, where we are going to see the blessings of the Lord uh, shower upon our lives and His goodness and His blessings following us. So get ready church uh, because it's your level of expectancy that will bring in the miracle. Okay, so if you are believing for big things, start believing. If there is an enemy who is coming to, uh, to bring in and clutter your mind with negativity and things like that, overcome it with the blood of the Lamb, overcome it with the declaration of the Word of God because the Word of God is a fire, the power to transform your situation. So take authority 
authority of the word of God and make the confession of the word of God in your situation, in your surroundings and get ready and let the level of expectancy go that you're going to see the miracle of God in your life, in your family, in your home, in your business, in our neighborhood, in our city, in our nation and we believe that we will overcome and we will come out victorious in Jesus name that this situation will pass by and God will give us the victory God has to give us the victory it's not any man who can take any credit but God inside of us is the miracle working source so church if each one of us becomes the powerhouses that God wants us to be declaring his power declaring his word declaring faith declaring miracles in our surrounding in our neighborhood I'm telling you very soon, we will see the glory of the Lord. We will see the miracle working power of God do wonders in our life. So church, get set, get set because we are on the brink of something beautiful. I, I believe your expectancy level goes beyond your thinking and you think of big things that the Lord has kept in store for all of us. So let's get set to move into the new season in Jesus name. Amen. 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 I hope you are encouraged with that. Lord, we pray that you will enable us to put our faith in you and our level of expectancy will connect to your way of uh, big things, oh Lord, and we will see the bigness of your blessings in all around us, Lord, in every dimension, every area of our lives. As a family of God, as individuals, Lord, as powerhouses of your kingdom, Lord, help us to reach out declaring your word and seeing your word come into fruition into our lives, into our situations, and we see the blessings abound in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's continue and move ahead this uh, morning. I asked Pastor Sylvia to join me, and together we are going to believe uh, God to continue to minister to us, speak to us, and bless us. Amen. And this is the 38th week for the Unite 714 prayer that we have been praying along with the uh, global church across uh, 180 plus countries uh, we are uniting with them every morning 714 and evening 714 we can't match the time but if we are praying every day that's good enough and as a corporate family every Sunday we make it a point to pray give extra room for this time because this is to fight against the pandemic and we want to be one with the body of Christ across the globe so church it will be coming up on your screens uh, you just uh, uh, be ready to uh, read the scripture and uh, to get uh, get moving ahead amen i'll ask pastor sylvia to uh, to to read the uh, to, to pray for us the prayer this year mm -hmm. morning and uh, we'll read it together as a family of god let's read together psalm 149 verses 5 to 9 let the godly exult in glory let them sing for joy on their beds let the high praises of God be in their throats and the two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance for, on the nation and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fretters of iron, to execute on them the judgment written. This is honor for all his godly ones. Praise the Lord. Come, let's pray together. Lord, you have placed a two-edged sword in our hands. In Hebrew, the word edge can refer to the word mouth, as in the mouth of a river. When our mouth speaks or prays the words your mouth has spoken, great power is released. This word of the Spirit in Ephesians 6.17 is the weapon used to destroy your enemies. From his mouth comes a sharp sword, Revelations 19 verses 15. We wield this two-edged sword with power and precision today. Heavenly Father, you say in Psalm 2.8, Ask of me and I will make the nations your heritage and the earth, ends of the earth your possession. Therefore, today we come go boldly before you, your throne with millions of your people from 180 nations proclaiming and praying these words. Lord, give us our communities, our cities, our countries and every nation of the world. Revive your church and save millions upon millions of precious souls through a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, your word promises in Matthew chapter 16 verses 19. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. These keys of the kingdom of heaven are ours today as well. You also promise in Psalm 149 verses 8 that every form of opposition to the advance of your kingdom can be locked up 
chained and fettered through praise and prayer we stand on these words today lord the advancement of your kingdom is being opposed in some nations around the world in the name of your son jesus push back the opposition to the advance of your glorious kingdom even as one day you will bind satan for a thousand years revelation 20 verses 1 to 3 we cry out now and ask you to spiritually fetter and chain the deceptive powers blinding the world's peoples finally we ask you by your abundant authority to do what our world has been unable to do we ask you to completely eradicate covid-19 from our world in jesus name amen amen, amen. and please do remember to pray regularly even as we forward it on your whatsapp amen. so take it and pray amen and we believe uh, we are going to very soon be out of this because this is uh the church praying and there is power in the amen. prayer of the saints god's perfect will is going to be done amen. in the days to come amen, amen. and uh, this is being the very first sunday of uh amen. december we would like to pray at this time for all those who are celebrating the wedding anniversaries and also their birthdays during this month and uh, we would love to pray for all of you and we want to believe god's uh, hand upon you and we want to say that god will fulfill every dream desire of yours in this coming month so we'll pray as a family and we'll just believe and uh, if you are the near and dear one you're the parent around or you're the spouses hold your hand and uh, together we believe god to just his presence just come upon you and touch you right now father in heaven we thank you for your precious people we thank you lord for enabling them to enter into the new month and lord even as they come into this new month lord even as they have their birthdays for those who have already completed the birthdays in the last 5 days we just lift them up and also the ones who are going to be having the birthdays in the coming days mm-hmm. lord we lift them up before your throne and we pray and thank you for preserving them and keeping them enabling them to go all through the last week safe and sound and lord for meeting them at the point of need lord we pray that you cover them with your precious blood and lord your angelic protection will continue to be their portion in the going out they coming in and lord i pray their coming years will be more blessed than the years Amen. that they have gone through and lord they will see the favor of god they'll see the blessings of you abound in the life is and when they put you first in the lives or i pray every need of the life will be met in the name of jesus grant them the best of health peace joy and fulfill every dream they have in your perfect will Thank in you. jesus name we also Amen. lift up all those who are uh, celebrating the wedding anniversaries lord lord that the bonds of love yes. will continue to grow lord Amen. that even as the love for you will increase the love for one another will increase and lord you cover the marriages with your precious blood preserve them lord and let the love for you increase and love for one another increase mm-hmm. grant them the best of health continue to preserve them and bless them and fulfill every heart's cry for them their household and the future lord in jesus name we pray amen amen amen, amen. amen. hallelujah god bless you we also would like to pray for all those who are faithfully giving their tithes and offering many of you are keeping it on the side and wanting to deposit later but we want to thank you for your faithfulness and your commitment towards obeying the word of god amen. and because your blessings come from that amen and uh, even as you have been faithful in that we want that god will bless you this is the beginning of the month we like to pray for all those who are giving the tithes and offering and continually sowing in mm. and ask pastor silvia to pray for you yes lord we mm. pray lord for all those who are mm. come uh, are uh, mm. um, lord there those who are giving their tithes and yes, their so. offering lord into your kingdom oh lord so. we pray your Trust blessings you. over so. their lives of god even as uh, lord you have promised that when we give one tenth of the portion the 90 Ninety portion is blessed, O oh God, and I thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us, O oh Father, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I pray your promises, which says, "Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, will come and be." Mm-hmm. fall into our bosom yeah. lord into each one who has been a, a giver of oh father lord you bless them lord bless their barns let it never run dry lord so you bless the bread and the the water of oh father lord i pray for good health to be their portion yes, of god yeah. i pray that the enemy will Shana not Allah touch Allah them Allah lord Allah i pray Allah for Allah a hedge of protection Allah around them and Allah. their family and their household and the possession of oh god that the in no way Allah. the enemy would touch them lord bless them yes, lord. lord even as they give unto you Yes, in Father. Jesus name we pray amen 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 amen, amen. and we i hope you've kept your communion elements ready even as we get set to bless these elements which remind us of the great uh, sacrifice of the lord on the cross 
okay you know the lord jesus uh, came lived a normal human life and ultimately uh, took off all the pain the 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 insult the agony on your behalf and my behalf and for the sins of the world and these symbols or these elements remind of us uh, reminders of the great love of jesus mm-hmm. and uh, his word uh, encourages us to do this as often as possible uh, to remember the great sacrifice of the lord okay this bread speaks of his broken body all the stripes that he took on our behalf or uh, for our sins for our sickness all that he took it he bore it on our behalf that every time we come before this bread and we remember we remember what jesus did for you and me okay this uh, cup reminds us of his shed blood that he shed his precious blood and his blood is the power which has given us a redemption power which has given us the hope of eternity which has given us the power to be set free from our sins our sickness mm-hmm. and we ask the blessings of the lord you may not have a a proper juice at home even a simple water is there at home and a biscuit or a bread piece to take it we are believing that this signifies the body of jesus this signifies the blood of the lamb the uh, blood of jesus who became a ultimate sacrificial lamb on our behalf and we pray that god's blessing will uh, come upon this uh, uh, these uh, this elements of his love bless the bread lord yes. bless the cup that lord even as we partake of it in a worthy manner this morning yes. it will bring in strength it will bring in healing it will bring in resurrection power lord into our into our physical bodies yes. lord even to our uh, into our in other areas of our life where we need your heavenly intervention lord dead situations lord which seems so finished lord i pray resurrection power amen. because you died and you rose again amen. giving us a resurrection power amen. we speak for the resurrection power to everyone who's partaking of this table this morning yes, in a worthy manner physically mentally materially healing in marriages yes. lord healing in relationships amen. that lord will be able to forgive forget yes. because you died for our sins lord yes, you yes. took it all you were sinless you took it all on our behalf yes, yes. and we are so grateful to you lord for these emblems mm-hmm. of your great love bless the bread bless the cup yes. we're going to partake mm-hmm. of it this morning in jesus name amen, amen. praise be to god it's a joy and a privilege uh, to be here once again as a servant of the most high god to share with you what the spirit of god has impressed upon my heart for this sunday and even as you hear wherever you are hearing maybe at your home or maybe you're just watching this uh, uh, this recording a little later or much later wherever but i believe this word will minister to you encourage you strengthen you uh, because this is what the holy spirit of god wants us to hear Amen. Let's ask the Holy Spirit of God to just come in our midst this morning, and just to take charge, take control, uh, so that His presence comes and ministers to all of us, removing every distraction, anything that can keep us away from hearing what God wants us to hear this morning. Hallelujah! Father in heaven, we come before you in the name that is above every other name, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we come to you, humbling ourselves, Lord, just to receive from you. Lord, remove every distraction, every hurdle. everything that may come between you and us this morning and i pray lord that your word the rich man of your river of uh, of your word the rich man of your word will just come in amidst minister to us speak to us edify us and create as a family of god remove every room for doubt remove every room for distractions lord but lord let help us to just do one thing so focus eyes on its own room and to receive from your holy spirit holy spirit of god i surrender myself as your vessel i pray that your river flow out of my belly and let it that that rich man of your word just come in with edification and strength so that we are built as a family of god filled with your strength and your power in jesus name amen 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 god bless you and uh, 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 the topic of my message this morning is expect good things and know that god is the source of your wealth expect good things and know that god is the source of your wealth 
Now let me tell you that uh, these are trying times, testing times, challenging times. Uh, when you look at what's happened to the world in the last nine months, we seem to be in a big, 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 big mess. Okay, the world's economy seems to be going for a toss. Uh, when you see uh, anything uh, around us, nothing seems to be stable. Uh, everything is seeming to be uh, going on a you know, like a toss and, and everything seems to be unstable. In the future, nobody knows how it will be, what it will be. When you talk to the world, when you see all the analysts are talking about the future of the economy and things like that, everything seems to be uh, unpredictable and very negative. But in the midst of it, praise God for the children of the Most High God, for those who know our Lord, our Master, our Savior, Jesus as the Lord and Master of their lives. Those who have accepted Him as the best friend, regardless of what background you come from. But if you have made Jesus the Lord of your lives, I want you to know this, that this word that comes this uh, from here this uh, today will minister to you, will encourage you, will help you to understand the power of the written word of God because the Bible is the written word of God as believers we believe and we know that the Bible is the, the breath of God is the, is the word of God and even as you read it uh, you, un you understand and you allow the word to sink into your spirit man it does wonders to you you know I can make mistakes the world can make mistakes the, the great analysts and the, the great scholars of the world can make blunders but the word of God never makes a blunder it was written by the power of the Holy Spirit uh, through the uh, various men of God placed in different parts of the world but yet the same message the same word was written without any technology or anything but written and breath by uh, 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 written by the power of the Holy Spirit of God so the word it speaks to us and encourages us even in these situations church it's our duty to look into the word read the word uh, meditate on the word chew on the word and trust and obey the word and even as you do that uh, you can be rest assured that we will be strengthened in a, in a man so even as we uh, go ahead and uh, look into the scriptures i will be using uh, i want to give before i go ahead credits to two men of god one is uh, dr morris serrello and uh, others uh, pastor joel austin because i've used both their uh, bibles which they have got the study bibles that they've written one is on the financial freedom bible written by dr morris serrello and the other is the hope bible by uh, uh, Pastor Joel Austin. So I'm using their Bible. So I want to give credits to the, the inputs that I've received from their notes and along with the Holy Spirit input in my heart. We are going to be enjoying the word this morning. So as we begin, I just want you to turn your Bibles to uh, to Psalm, a very well-known Psalm, a love Psalm. Some of us know it like a parrot. We can just narrate it. But let me tell you, a psalm which has such deep significance, such deep meaning. Every time you chew, every time you meditate on it, it speaks to you with new revelation and new encouragement and new strength. And that's none other but the Psalm 23rd. So that's Psalm 23. Okay, Psalm 23rd is the most uh, well-read and the most uh, used uh, uh, psalm in the Bible. And uh, everybody knows it, mostly everybody. You name any traditional Christian, you know, ask anybody. Every knows, everybody knows about, uh, about the Psalm 23. Uh, and I would like to read from two versions this morning. Okay, one is, uh, I would like to read it uh, from the, <clears throat> the New King James Version. Okay, so the New King James Version goes on like this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. And uh, I would like to use the New Living Translation uh, and I would like to read from that also. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. 
for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. You know, the Lord uh, uh, is my shepherd. I have all that I need. The verse 1 is, uh, is the opening line of this psalm, which is so familiar with all of us. We all know. And when we, we have read it and we have said this so many times, we have prayed this so many times. As young uh, little children in Sunday school, we were made to say this. So every Sunday we would have to narrate this to our Sunday school teacher when we were uh, very, very small in my younger days in our Sunday schools. Okay, so, uh, but it's a very recognizable phrase which we all know, which all familiar to. Okay, and people find comfort uh, by these words to know that the Lord is a shepherd and that uh, we will have no... No, no one but he will provide for our needs <clears throat> okay this psalm talks about life and death and everything in between uh, and if you read the psalm you are always reminded that you and I have a shepherd that desires to meet our needs and bring comfort to our hearts we are in a current situation in the world which is hit by the pandemic and we are all going through a kind of a rough weather where we are in our highs and our lows. Praise God for his angelic protection. Praise God for his supernatural provisions. Praise God for what we are, where we are. And in the midst of it, everything is, looks fine and we are still around. That's itself is a great testimony. But uh, let me tell you, there are areas where we are disturbed. We don't know what's happening. Okay, but we know for sure that the Lord is with us and he's a great shepherd who's leading us. And we will have no need, no lack of any need. He will meet all our needs supernaturally. Okay, some translations uh, talk about the verse 3 that I read. You saw me reading earlier from New King James Version, which is said, which uh, verse 3 says, uh, it, uh, God helps us to restore your soul. Okay, but in this version, I'm reading, He renews our strength. But uh, we'll just look into the aspect of it in, in, in regards to the New King James Version. Okay, what it says. So it says, God wants to restore your soul. Now, let me tell you, your soul is your mind. Okay, your will and your emotions. And uh, we are a three part being. We have a spirit that's part of us that lives for eternity. And we have a soul and we have a, a body while we are having our life on this earth. Our soul is where the enemy tries to wound and defeat us. And uh, our soul is where you can experience a brokenness from the past or lasting hurts and disappointments. We all say that, uh, the, we have all heard about the phrase that, you know, like uh, soul ties, we need to get rid of our soul ties and we have heard about all those kinds. But let me tell you, most of the time when we have hurts and unforgiveness and disappointments and whatever we go through, it always remains, uh, those, those wounds are in the soul. Okay, so we need to get rid of this and we need to understand that how to go about to bring healing, you know. And let me tell you, our Lord, our Master is there to bring in healing. The day you accepted Jesus, your Lord, Master, Savior, the Lord does a healing work in our inner man, especially in our soul area, so that we are able to forgive, forget all those hurts in our life. Some of us tend to carry it a little longer, but even then God gives the grace, the ability to, to forget, to forgive and to be restored into what God wants us to be. And God over a period of time brings his healing power uh, to those broken areas of our life to see supernatural healing so that we forget it and become complete and whole. And it's a continuous process. It doesn't mean that you don't get hurt again. You tend to get hurt again. Then you, someone said something, someone was bitter to you or anything. Again, our soul gets tended. But every time we, we acknowledge and we go in his presence and seek his help and seek his pardon, he's a great shepherd who sees to you that it is restored back into completion, that we are made perfect to the way into his righteousness. So he makes us better, happier and healthier than we were before. Each time we go running into his presence and we say, Lord, there are challenges in my life and and uh, and uh, we can be rest assured uh, that he will minister to our soul. So even when I walk, uh, we say that he renews our strength. He renews, uh, basically he restores our soul. 
He's a master specialist in restoring our souls and every time we have those damages and let me tell you, none of us are prone from it. We, even though we may be in the kingdom of God for so many years, we may be fasting and praying, we may be reading the word, we may be saturated. But let me tell you, there are hits that we get which are unpredicted uh, and we don't even know how it comes from, where it comes. The enemy subtly brings in and brings in hurt. Uh, unforgiveness, bitterness, so many things, our soul gets disturbed. But praise God that God has given us supernatural ability. And even as we read the verse 3, it says, um, it clearly says, He restores our soul. <clears throat> he leads us in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And God is uh, so loving and so caring. He desires that each one of us <coughs> are restored and, and we walk in His righteousness. Okay. Now, if you will look at uh, verse 2, it says, he leads us beside peaceful streams. He lets us rest in green meadows. When we are resting in him, he is able to do a work in our lives. Now, <coughs> I just want you to know this. Uh, <coughs> in these challenging times, in these tricky times, it's very easy for our mind to stray. It's very easy for us to get into strife, stress, depression, all kinds of things. But in the midst of it, I believe God is asking and ministering to us through the psalm, encouraging us to be still, encouraging us to just uh, enjoy uh, the stillness of the brook or the stream and just rest around it. Basically, he's asking us to refresh ourselves by sitting in his presence. Okay. Now, let me tell you, God is much able to restore. God is much able to, to do things beyond what we can think or imagine. And... and uh, it is necessary that when we learn to rest and be still, God does his work. God does his correction work. You know, no major surgery takes place unless you are put on anesthesia. Okay, there's an anesthesia specialist who comes and who puts, it, uh, puts you on anesthesia so that you are not able to experience anything and you remain still. And then the surgeon works on you. In the similar way, when we go through life's challenges and storms and pressures around us, God through his scripture is encouraging us to learn to rest, learn to be still, learn to, to just enjoy and his presence, his, his power and know that he's much able. Now God is able to bring in supernatural restoration. God is able to bring in supernatural correction. God is able to do that healing into our lives. Okay. And if you, if you look a little further on, he says he's able to do a work in our lives. He, he prepares a feast before us. He anoints our head with the oil of healing and hope. How many of you know uh, that uh, when you apply oil to your head and you, some of us know, some of our, the women do it quite often in a week or in a twice a week, I don't know. But I do once a month. Whenever I go for my, my haircut or my thing, I get that guy to put oil. Once a month, I get oil put on my head. It does a relaxation job for me. Okay, so I allow that to happen. And here he mentions about how you honor me by anointing my head with oil. Okay, now that, that oil is the oil of healing. Okay, that, what God is speaking about. I mean, there's a different context to it about how sheep uh, gets affected. And uh, that's a different God. But this morning I'm trying to tell you that God knows how to minister. God knows how to de-stress you. God knows how to relax you. And God has kept us uh, for us through this psalm an oil of anointing to bring in healing to our, to our inner man, to those areas where we may have been hit, where we may have been stressed, where we may be all shaken up. So and even as we learn to rest in His presence, and we even learn to just uh, uh, know that God is able, God will prepare a feast for us, uh, okay? And He will anoint the head with oil of healing and hope, okay? Knowing that God is able uh, to bring everything into restoration. So there are people who have hits, people who have had losses in business, people who have lost jobs, people who have got uh, uh, salaries which have been cut, people have lost bonuses. Maybe you're not able to, to uh, you're not able to do like what you did all these years and your business has suffered, your life has suffered in many ways. But let me tell you, this is the promise of God for every child of the Most High God, for every believer to know that even as you learn to rest, even as you learn to sit in His presence, even God is going to prepare a, a feast before you. God is going to anoint you with His oil and He is going to enable you to be uh, having a good rest and He'll bring in a supernatural healing when He's your Applies the oil of anointing, he will restore what the locust has eaten, he will restore what the enemy is trying to take from you, and he'll do a new work in our lives. So don't let the busyness of life uh, 
rob this blessing from us. You know, many of us think that if we run, if we do things in our own strength, our own ability, and we are so busy doing so many other things, rather than learning to give God the top priority and resting in His presence. Even as we learn to rest, even as we learn to, to just be still in the presence of God, I am assuring you, church, that you will see major victories, which is beyond what you would strive and stress for. So it's learn to just trust the Lord, learn to just claim his promises and know that God is able and that he will take us through. So it's necessary that we take time to be still in the presence of the Lord, meditate on his word. Okay, just being still is dangerous because you can fall asleep, you will start snoring. It's better to be still in the presence of God and then to read the word of God, then again to ponder on the word of God and then learn to be still in the presence of God. That's how the word of God ministers or encourages or speaks to us. Okay, and uh, if you want to be, uh, uh, if you want to experience a restoration, you want to experience breakthroughs, you want to experience the blessings of the Lord that the Lord has promised us, uh, you have to learn to just be still. Don't strive, don't stress, don't run around, don't overwork yourself and uh, reach nowhere and then you see that you're burnt out and you're trying to, to, I don't know whom you are trying to please in your own self, I don't know whom you are trying to please uh, or whom you are trying to show your competence. I'm no, I'm telling you, God will give you major victories when you learn to just be still in the presence of God and you, you richly read the word of God, meditate on the word of God and God will make a way where there seems to be no way. So it, uh, the, he, he clearly says he will restore and heal your soul and you will experience victory that and, and a peace that passeth all understanding. So not only will you be restored in your soul, but he will bring in supernatural peace and he will bring in that uh, the peace that passeth all understanding. You don't have to know why, how, which way, but God will enable you to be experience his rest and his power. Now, I want you to turn your Bibles to uh, the next Psalm. Okay, the next Psalm is where God is speaking to us about his abundance. God is speaking to us about how he owns everything and he has the power to, to bless you and me. So if you turn your Bible to Psalm uh, 24, uh, verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world they that dwell therein. For he had founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend to, into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Church, if you believe and you have trusted Jesus as your Lord and Master and Savior, this is what God is promising you, that his blessings are your portion. That's going to come your way. And you have to be rested short and encouraged by the first verse that we read this uh, just now in Psalm 24, which encourages that God is the source of our wealth. It is not any man, it is not that individual, that institution, that deal that you did. No, yes, let me tell you in the midst of it, every blessing, everything that comes around you is through the Lord himself. God is the source of our wealth. It's not any man. Okay, David declares God's divine ownership of the world and everything in it. God is the sovereign owner of everything that you and I see. If you turn your Bibles to Haggai chapter 2 verse 8, it says, The silver is mine, the gold is mine, said the Lord of hosts. Silver and gold belongs to the Lord. Everything in this earth belongs to the Lord. The Lord is the owner of everything. The Lord God Almighty, He is the master of the universe. He is the owner of the universe. He's the one who's created life, who's the one who's created everything around us. And he's the master. He owns it all. So God is the source of our wealth, not man, not an individual, not an institution, not that one, this one. But let me tell you, God is the source from where we get our provisions, our blessings, our increase, every blessing. So any wealth that you have today, any wealth, any position that you are in, you may be saying, okay, I have a car, I have a home, I have this. Anything that you have is a gift from God. It is his blessing that is abounding in your life. If you have a good job, okay, uh, and he's given it to you, uh, he's given all that blessing that you see around you to enjoy it. Okay, so the, the home, the car, the, the everything that you could be having, the smallest thing that you could be having or owning, and you may feel that you got it done. Or you may think, okay, it's, uh, it's been given to me by the company or it's been given to me by that one, this one. Let me tell you uh, that everything, including your paycheck, which comes every month, 
is the blessing of the Lord upon your life. The Lord has created that avenue for you to receive the blessing. The Lord has given you the deal through the business venture to get the blessing, to get the profit. And God has enabled you to establish what you have. So everything that you have currently, I want you to know this, that, that all those things are a blessing given by the Lord himself. He's the source of your wealth. He's the source of your blessing. Whatever you may have, look at yourself. You know, many a times we look at what we have and we're never happy. We are always grumbling, murmuring. We always look there, there, this one, that one. But let me tell you, look down. Look to the people who are less, uh, having less means than you. And you know how privileged, how blessed you are, how God has blessed you beyond what you can think or imagine. Only God can give you the power to get wealth. Okay, you may feel that it's your smartness, you may feel that it's my intellect, my idea, my strategy, literally nothing is yours. Everything that you have inside of you, every wisdom, every move, every talent, everything that you do is given of God. God owns it all. God is the owner of you, of that creativity, ideas and the strategy and the talent and all that you have. We need to know that he is the source of our wealth. Okay, what is Satan's strategy? Satan's strategy, strategy is to try to get you to forget God's promises and forget that God always does what he says. Okay, he will do. When the Jews forgot what God had done for them, they stopped worshipping him at the altars. They got distracted. They forgot that God blessed them all through. They forgot what all the miracles, all the signs that God did and they got distracted and stopped worshipping him at the altars that God wanted him them to be worshipping it. But when they thought that the blessing that they received were because of what their own hands had done, they stopped tithing. You know, that's what happens many a times when we start thinking, oh, it's because of me, because I'm doing, I'm earning, I'm doing this. Uh, and, you know, many times that makes you, that pride sets in and unknowingly you come to a point where you think, oh, it's my doing, it's my smartness. I did that and I got that. And we forget those days where we were so aware of nothing and God blessed us and God prospered us. But we should never forget like the Israelites forgot. They stopped tithing. Can you imagine one of the biggest uh, drawbacks and the biggest thing that you can do is to stop tithing, even in the midst of a famine. You have to learn to sacrificially give your time, even if that balance 90 looks very less. You know, we have lived our lives trusting the Lord in that way all through our life, all through the starting days when we had our challenges. And you won't believe uh, how God supernaturally honored us for being faithful in our giving and our tithing. You know, you cannot. But many a times when pride hits in and sings in and we don't even know that how the enemy subtly comes and makes us think that it is our ability, it's our smartness. And we, we come to a point where we stop tithing. But let me tell you, we should not be like the Israelites because they stopped uh, coming at the, worshipping at the altar of the Lord. They stopped uh, and they thought it's their smartness and they even stopped giving their tithes because they thought that it is because of what they did. And... Uh, <clears throat> Now, let me tell you, tithing is like a remembrance and a thanksgiving to God for what he has given us. Every time God provides, we give one tenth of it to the Lord. You know, in the olden times, they were not giving currency. They were giving in kind. If they got a sack of uh, uh, two, uh, ten sacks of rice, they would give one sack of rice to the house of God. It was it was like that. It was in kind and it was in, in material. But today, we because we consider money as a currency that we live in, we give in currency and we give in tithes and money uh, in money form. Okay, so let me uh, let me help you to understand that uh, God wants us to continue to be givers. He doesn't want us in the midst of a famine to stop on a tithing. Don't get uh, 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 carried away by the lies and the uh, of the enemy that you don't need to tithe. Okay, you are first priority wherever wherever God has placed you in whichever. Uh, house of God, where you are committed to, your, it's your duty to, to pay the tithes in that local storehouse. It's your duty not to compromise on that local uh, tithing. Because if you compromise on local tithing, you may think that I'm helping that one. Help Let me tell you, it doesn't work. The word of God says it has to come to the local storehouse where you are worshipping, where you are connected to, where you are committed to. You can't use that tithe and use it for some other's blessing or to give somebody to so that you can over and above your tithes. The tithe has to come to the local storehouse. It's just for you to help you to understand. Many a times as we start growing in the Lord and we start becoming, we think we, are, we know it all, we become extra smart. We try to be very sweet and gentle and we think, okay, it's okay, the church doesn't need it. And it's not a question whether the church needs it 
or not. You, it's not the question of whether the local house needs it or not. It's your duty to obey the command of the Lord and to bring the, uh, your tithes to the local house where you're connected to so that there is enough and more in that house and your blessing is there. See, more than anything is your blessing that is behind it. Okay, because when you forget and to, to, to remember uh, and to thank God for his tithes and uh, for what he has blessed you with and uh, come and honor him by sowing him through the house where you are connected to you think you know you have helped that man of God and that servant of God in that church you are not connected there you can over and above the tithes you can bless them I, it's okay one part that you are not giving your offering but I want to give my offering to that organized I will say that's fine but you cannot compromise on your tithing tithing has to come to the local house that you're connected to wherever you're worshipping wherever you're being fed wherever you're connected to like if you're part of PHM you're part of the PHM family you need to bring your tithes to the local house you can't go say okay I'll give to that ministry that ministry no you can give your offerings and above to those kind of places and to help somebody or you can give a sacrificial off a sacrificial offering there are different offerings that you can use to show there okay so when you stop tithing you're making the non-verbal statement that you have forgotten the blessings of God okay forgotten that you are not your own source and forgotten to give him thanks for all that you have God wants you to remember that he's your provider it is easy to become so caught up in making a living and providing for your family, your personal needs, that you forget that God is your source. God blessed you with all that you have today. You cannot deny that. God has blessed you with everything around you. God has blessed you, brought you, so for many of us, from the zero to hero. Like we can as a testimony stand and say we were nothing. But God honored our giving, God honored our tithing, God tested us, took us through the grind. We were nothing but God lifted us up today and has brought to us today what we have. We acknowledge and we proudly say it's the giving of the Lord. Had it not been for our giving, I don't think we could have experienced what we would have experienced. When we look at the world and the people around us, I'm telling you, we are so honored to know how God has brought from where to where. Just because he's seen our faithfulness in our giving, in our tithing. Now, so I would encourage you to stop for a minute and think about your current financial situation. I know many of us have got hits during this pandemic. I know many of us are going through challenges of, of lack of funds and lack of uh, finances. Now, I want you to ask yourself, am I depending solely upon this income? Okay, which is the natural wisdom or, is, or, or your natural ability to do your work and the way that you do your wisdom on your own understanding or it's your own ability and the resources to pay off your your loans or your debts or are you trusting and recognizing that God is the source of your provision many of us are concerned and tensed and worried how will I pay the light bill how will I pay the rent how will I clear that loan how will I do that and you are getting carried away in your thinking and the enemy is so smartly subtly pressurizing you and putting you down because he's trying to blind you from making you understand that it is not the things around you it's not your wisdom it's not your own understanding it's not your ability it's not your talent it's not how you do how you communicate how what you did what moves you did that is the source of your blessing but it's the key to your blessing is that you are trusting god as the source of your supply and you're faithful in your tithing and whatever God has blessed you with even if it's that hundred rupees you're faithful in putting your ten rupees in the eyes of God it is big amount because you have been faithful in that little church I'm telling you that that is the key to your victory I know this is a season where we have not had a chance to physically meet come and so you have not been able to give your tithe that's okay but this I am not preaching because I, I have seen something. No, this is a word that God has given me for the season, for the current season to experience a breakthrough, to experience his blessing, to experience his abundance so that we can see the goodness of the Lord. And we can know that it is not the world economy that is the source of our wealth, but it is our Jehovah Jireh, God who supplies. He's the source of our wealth. The economy of the world will go for a toss. Things may go haywire. Things may not be like it was used to be. But in the midst of it, if you trust that the source of your provision is God, you don't have to feel afraid. You don't have to be stressed out. You don't have to be worried. You don't have to be anxious. But you just have to be obedient in that little that you have in putting your tithes into the local storehouse and to see your blessings abound. Because that is a sign, as a commitment to say, Lord, I'm trusting you. I'm believing you. I'm not looking to the right. I'm not looking to that man. I'm not looking to that institution. I'm not looking to anybody. But I'm looking to you as my source, as my provision, as my Jehovah Jireh who will meet my need. And church, even as we lovingly and obediently do that, you can be rest assured 
that God will supernaturally provide. He has given you so much already around you. We have seen the blessings of the Lord. You don't have to fear. You don't have to be anxious. You don't have to be worried what the situation. The enemy is smart. He subtly comes and brings in fear. Oh, you don't have a job now. You don't have that. You don't have that. I'm telling you, be faithful with what God blesses you with. And see that you give your tithes. See how God bless you. Because that's, a, that's like you're endorsing, Lord, I trust you. You are my source. It is not any man. You are my source. And God will honor you. So, uh, <clears throat> I would encourage you that uh, take time to remember all the occasions that God has salvaged you. God has intervened you at the right time in the past. I know many of you will have testimonies. I have heard testimonies of so many of you. I know we have had so many testimonies about God coming us and salvaging us in the, in the last second. We didn't have money to pay fees for Joshua when he was growing up. Uh, we didn't have and this big amount. It means you have to pay lump sum for three months or six months. Uh, we didn't have that kind of money at that time in our hand. But we were faithful in our tithing. We were faithful in our giving. We did not have stress, but we knew we had to pay the school fees. You know, God would suddenly provide from nowhere. Like a raven, suddenly an order would come. Oh, least expected thing. Not looking to any individual, but trust in God, Lord. We are paying our tithes. We pay faithfully our offerings, Lord. We walk in your ways. You are the source of our provision. You are a Jehovah Jireh. And God has salvaged us. Many of you can testify the same with us. I know that you know that how God in your in various occasions has come and salvaged you, has helped you. Not only your provision, even in situations where you don't know what to do. But God made a way and escaped you. In that situation, that tricky moment, in that fight, in that argument, in that situation, you have different situations around you. But God always came in the last second and he salvaged us. Okay, so don't forget those occasions when God intervened and he, he sent timely help through unknown resources even. I have seen victory. We have seen as a family of God how God will use the strangest person, the least expected person to come and stand with us. The least expected person to come and encourage us. The least expected person to come and provide for us, bless us, meet us at the point of need. You know, that's how God works. That's how we know that God is the source of your wealth. It's not man. Because when you trust man, man fails you. People fail you. Your bosses fail you. Your seniors fail you. Your colleagues fail you. But let me tell you, God never fails us. Because he's the true source of our wealth. How many of you know that how God enabled you to pay for unexpected expenses? You had an extra bill, you had something going on, something went haywire because of a foolish move that you did. But God salvaged you supernaturally intervening and salvaging you from that issue where you had that challenge going on in your life. And, and you can look back and say, wow, that has to be God. We can tell you illustrations after illustration about God's heavenly intervention in our lives and salvaging us and setting us free and giving us provisions from the least expected sources. And God is much able. Let me tell you, many a times people make friendship with people because they feel, oh, he's an influential person. And when I am in time of need, he can help. Let me tell you, uh, that's natural because that's a human instinct. But let me tell you, as believers, as the children of the Most High God, we should have only one motive is to trust God, to know that his word is true, to know that God is my provider, to know that God is the source of my wealth, that God is the source of my blessings, God is the source of my every need met, and he's the only way. It's not any man. We need to be good human beings. We need to be caring, loving. We need to be genuine in our in our in our in our in our, uh, in our relationships, not with motives as to how I can make advantage and things like that. No, let me tell you, church. It's time that we know that God knows it all. He knows us. Nothing is hidden from His heavenly gaze. How much ever you may fool the world and the friends and people around you, but He, God, knows us just as we are and there are many a times we can't experience greater blessings greater breakthroughs because of this uh, this compromise in our day-to-day -day living where we instead of trusting God as the source of our wealth we are trusting people individuals and others around and we're using our own intellect we're doing our own things and we get land up all frustrated depressed sad and sometimes we we even refer the word we even refer scriptures here and there but we misquoted we instead of really trusting on the promise of the word of God but if you're trusting in the word of God if you're anchoring your faith in the word of God and you know that God is a provider you don't have to be worried you just trust him and if you have been faithful in your tithing that's the ceiling that's the final thing to know that you will not be put to shame God will make a way and God will take you through 
How many of you remember the time that you were looking for a job, you didn't have a job and someone's word here and there, God used somebody, someone, somewhere, that individual to get you that job. When you look back, flashback, it was not because of your ability, it was not because of your talent, not because of who you are, but God used some X, Y, Z whom you didn't even know to just put a word on your behalf and you got that job. And today, with the same job, you're all worked up and tense. Let me tell you, if you trust God as your source of your wealth and you trust God who blessed you with all that you have currently, you don't have to fear, you don't have to be anxious, just rest in the Lord. Learn to be still in the presence of God and learn to know that He's able. He's able. He's able to do much and beyond what you think or expect. Okay, so in His, there is power with Him. How many of you know uh, that you needed help to buy a car and you didn't have that kind of money, but you had somebody who said, take this money, pay me as and when able. How many of you know that you wanted to buy that house and you didn't have that kind of money and someone just stood with you and said, take this money, give me as and when able. How many of you know that you want to clear a debt and somebody or lend you a hand and said, take this money, brother, take this money, sister, use it, pay as and when able. How many of you know that God can do that when you trust him? Don't look to man. It's very easy to look to that person because he looks very influential. You'll be shocked and surprised when he ditches you and puts you down. And you were buttering all your life thinking that this guy will help me out and he'll salvage me in the time of my need. I'm telling you, there's nobody who can salvage you other than our God himself. He's the only one. He's the source of our wealth. He's the source of our peace. He's the source of our blessing. There's nobody else who can take you through. We need to just trust him. We just need to focus eyes on him and not any man or institution or people or anyone. If we have done it, we do need to say, sorry, Lord, forgive me for getting distracted, looking here, looking there, looking to that person, looking to my boss, looking to my organization. But Lord, I'm ready to look to you this morning because you are my, my heavenly father. You are my heavenly provider. Lord, you will provide for me because your word said that you are the source of everything. You own the gold, the silver. You own everything around this. You are the owner. Lord, why should I look to, you, to the sublet guy or someone who stole it from you? Or rather, I look to you. Okay, so how many of you remember a time when somebody brought in a bag of groceries to your home? Small things. I'm not talking about only the big thing. Even small things matter. You desired something and God provided through somebody who came to your home with a gift of, uh, of that particular small little thing that you desired. You were wanting to have it. You were craving to have it. You didn't know, but, you, but God provides. That's how God works. God wants to meet your every need, small and big. Nothing is too difficult for me. He's the owner of everything. But he wants you to do one thing is to trust him. Rest in his presence. We learn to be still. Learn to know that he's a, he's a shepherd. And he who, who meets our every need. If you learn to just rest in his presence. You just learn to be rest and be still in his presence. And know that he will provide. You don't have to be worrying. So regardless of how desperate your financial circumstances during these times. I want you to begin to praise God and acknowledge that Lord you are my source you are the one who's going to take care you are the one who's going to take care of my tomorrow you are the one who's going to take care of my EMIs Lord you are the one who's going to take care of all that debt that I have and I'm believing God that you will help me to be debt free even as I faithfully tithe and even as I trust you rather than even as I meditate on your word and chew on your word and learn to rest in your presence and to be still knowing that you are my great source of wealth it's not man. It's not people around. And I'm telling you, even as you think about that, God will take charge of it. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. God will work miraculously and provide for your needs and you'll be blessed. Learn to praise God. Learn to praise God in the midst of that tricky situation. Learn to sing songs of praise. Now, praise does not mean getting a guitar and singing or getting... No, you could praise, praise, praise you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. You could be praying in the spirit language. Like, you could be doing anyway, but just praising God in the midst of your battle. Praising God in the midst of that situation, knowing that... My God is able, knowing that my God is the source of my provision, knowing that my God is a great shepherd who knows my need and will provide for my need, who will lead me in green pastures and will help me to, to lie still before that stream and to enjoy that 
that quietness, that, that beauty there and to know that I can rest in his presence and know that God will make my need met in the days to come okay it could be unpaid bills for some of you it could be uh, uh, it could be other financial needs that you have it could be a spirit of discouragement that just set in because of the way that we are living currently because you are not having the old freedom to move around to move around to meet friends or to travel or anything like that it could be other ki kinds of hopelessness that's coming and attacking your mind in this in this current scenario in the midst of this covid you know there are so many people who are being affected in their minds you know psychiatrics have uh, having a big job handling such patients and such people across the globe there's a huge uh, uh, number that's gone up because of uh, people's mind being affected especially the elderly and people like that who are stuck in their homes and not able to but I'm telling you in the midst of it if you learn to anchor our faith if you learn to praise God in the midst of it and learn to just enjoy his presence and bask in his presence rest in his presence I'm telling you God will enable us to be at peace be at rest to experience the power and his might in our lives so as we uh, this morning, even as we lift up those needs, it could be a, a loan that you've taken and you need to clear it up. It could be a debt that's hanging on your head because you need to pay those EMIs. It could be uh, some other need that you have this morning, which is uh, bothering you. It could be some settlement to be done. It could be uh, somebody to file. You are having an argument with. Maybe it's a boss that you can't stand. It's maybe it's different thing that's happened. Things have shaken around you and you are all disturbed and you are looking this source and that source source and that's so let me tell you stop looking anywhere but this morning we need to look to the greatest source of all is to our Jehovah Jireh look to our God who is the source of our wealth our peace our happiness our joy for our every provision let's lift up those needs in our hand lift it up in the throne room of God and declare to God that that God you give me the power to obtain wealth that you are the source of my supply Lord I believe that you will release supernatural provisions and interventions in my situation and Lord you know it all so I lift those needs in your throne room Lord asking you to intervene asking you to set me from the uh, the uh, free from the bondage of debt Lord Lord for those who are having a heavy financial crisis where they got debts mounting up and Lord the loans are going up and Lord they have the EMIs mounting up Lord I pray that you will come as a heavenly source intervene supernaturally and help them to find favor through you Lord in your own supernatural way Lord create a miracle for them even as you've been believing and fasting and praying during this 21 days of prayer that PHM has declared Lord we are believing this is a season for miracles we pray Lord that you will be the source of the miracle in their lives this morning and they will see themselves being debt free they will see themselves being set free from those pressure points and Lord they will see themselves being stressed out and de-stressed from those stressful uh, situations and Lord they will experience your peace that passes all understanding knowing that you are the source of the wealth knowing that you are the source of the provision knowing that you are the source who will give them peace and joy beyond their understanding Lord Lord I pray that the covenant relationship with you will never be broken Lord even as we learn to uh, to to live in our financial freedom enjoying your blessings upon our life Lord we will learn that our bonding our contract can never be uh, be broken oh father Lord it's impossible to break that contract because you bought us with the blood of the lamb Lord you bought us with the greatest sacrifice of Jesus on the cross Lord you bought us with a, your shed blood of Jesus with a divine purpose to fulfill your plan through our lives Lord I pray that no way the enemy will be able to come and disturb it but Lord this morning we rededicate we recommit and we are ready to believe in you that you are the source of our provision of blessing and there's no way that the enemy can have upper hand in our lives and Lord we want to expect good things from you hallelujah and even if you look at Psalm 23 the last verse there it says Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Church, we need to have this expectancy in our, in our man. Okay, regardless of the situation, regardless of what we are in, regardless of the pandemic situation where everything seems to be limited, restricted, uh, we have lockdowns, we can't do this, we can't do that, we can't go here, we can't cross the border, we can't fly internationally, we can't go for a holiday, all those restrictions in the midst of that. I believe God is encouraging you and me to expect good things. He says, surely goodness, surely your goodness, God's goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever 
this should be a hope that God's blessings are going to pursue you. His blessings, okay? His unfailing love, His peace, His goodness is going to follow you. Amen. If you believe what I have said this morning, and if you take it uh, and you apply these principles by spending that quality time in the presence of God, learning to rest in His presence, learning to be still, learning to trust in the shepherd of our lives that is going to lead us, who's going to meet our every need, and learning to know that He is the true source of our wealth, our blessings in our life, and being obedient in our tithes, giving, in giving our tithes, and we learn to <clears throat> look ahead with an expectancy that our future days are going to be blessed and God's presence and His blessing are going to be in our lives. And that His goodness and His, and His peace and His blessing are going to follow you. You can be rest assured that you will see the blessings of the Lord. With this anxiety and the things around us uh, which is trying to flood us will not be have any room. We will experience the love of God in our lives. And with that I want to close and just want to say uh, thank you for giving me the listening here. I pray that you will apply that word and will be blessed in Jesus name. Amen. Let's close in prayer when as Pastor uh, Sylvia joins me. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, <clears throat> for your faithfulness in our lives, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for ministering to us, for speaking to us. Lord, for encouraging us once again during these times, oh, Father. Lord, that you are the true source of our wealth. Yes. And Lord, that if we learn to just be still in your presence and anchor our faith, our trust in you and meditate on your word, Lord. Lord, you will lead us, you will provide for us and bless us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to know that we are going to be blessed beyond measure in the coming days. Help us to see that and to declare that and to live that on a daily basis, knowing, Lord, that you've got plans which are to bless us, to prosper us, not to bring us any harm. The enemy will try to roar, to, uh, to, to bring in fear, but Lord, we pray there will be no room for fear because we trust in the promise of your word. Bless us, Lord. We commit our coming days ahead into your holy hands. Lead us, guide us. Help us have a beautiful and a wonderful uh, week ahead, Lord. Let your presence, your peace go with us. And Lord, help us to be people who move in the power of your spirit. Lord, having a, a Lord, uh, Lord, when we move in the, in the world outside, Lord, let the world see your light in us. Let the world see your love in us. Let the world experience the, your warmth and the love and the encouragement through our lives, yes. Father. Let our testimonies bless them, mm -hmm. Father. Be with us, Lord. Let all glory be to you, Lord. Let our lives stand out for the glory of your name and yes. your name alone. Or in this season when you came into the world with a reason, Lord, help us to be those reasons, Lord Father. That we change the world around us by our testimony. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> and we send you all with this ironic blessing over yes. your life. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Shalom. Shalom. Have a beautiful blessed week. And see you on Wednesday for the Zoom prayer. Amen. God bless Amen. you. And for those of us who are coming in the morning, in the tomorrow morning 6.30. Yes. Bless you. Bless you. Love you all. Bye-bye.